In today's video, we're going to be talking about the most recent admission statistics for MIT. I'm going to be covering facts about the school, their most recent acceptance rates, the different factors that influence their admissions process, their student life and diversity, and so much more. If you're new to my channel, hey, my name is Dylan Nellis. I am your Gen Z college admissions coach over at Next Gen Admit. We help high achieving students just like you craft standout applications that get accepted to your dream schools. So if that sounds like something that you want, then stick around for this video. And also I have some free resources that are gonna make this process so much easier for you. My team and I did a ton of work, so you don't have to. We literally went through all the different and data sets for a bunch of different colleges and compiled all of the factors in admissions into one spreadsheet that I'm gonna give you for free. Cause every college weighs admissions factors differently. Some colleges care more about your essays. Some colleges care more about your academics. Some colleges take into account your state or your geographical location and some colleges don't. We packed all that information into our spreadsheet called the College Data Vault. You can check it out at nextgenadmit.com slash vault or just visit the description below. And now let's get into MIT admission statistics. So some quick facts about the university. MIT is located in Massachusetts. It is a private co-ed college. They have a 414 academic calendar, which basically means they have two standard semesters, each approximately four months long, but in between they have a one month term. This is unique about MIT. This term falls in January and allows students to pursue an internship, do a research project, take a single course or travel abroad. The the total number of undergraduate students enrolled in MIT is 4,535. Their student to faculty ratio is three to one, and they have a retention rate of 99%. As for their acceptance rate, overall, they had an acceptance rate of 4.5% for the most recent class of 2029. This is actually the same percentage they had last year, interestingly enough, but the acceptances within their decision cycles did differ. So MIT's early action acceptance rate was 6%, this is up from being 5.3% last year, and their regular decision acceptance rate was 2.4%. This one actually decreased slightly from being 2.6 last year. MIT also had a pretty significant increase in the number of applicants compared from last year. Their applicant numbers rose 3.72%, and this past cycle, they had 29,282 students apply. Okay, so it's pretty tough to get into MIT as we've clearly seen. So let's talk about the factors that influence their admissions decisions. We're gonna break this down into three categories that MIT admissions uses. The factors that are very important, the factors that are important, and then the factors that are considered. Under very important, we actually only have one factor, which is crazy. And that factor, I bet you won't guess it, it is your character and your personal qualities. Whoa, okay, everyone thought it was gonna be about academics. No, MIT really cares about the person that you are and what you're bringing to their university. So think about this when you're applying and especially when you're writing your college essays. Your character is single-handedly the most important quality when it comes to MIT admissions. Now under the important category, we have the academic rigor of your high school courses, your GPA, your letters of rec, your college essays, your standardized test scores, your interview, your extracurriculars, and your talent or your ability. Now under considered, we have your class rank, first generation status, your geographical residence, volunteer work, and work experience. And lastly, the things that they do not consider at all include whether you have alumni relations with the university, AKA being a legacy, your state residency, your religious affiliation, and the level of interest that you have for attending their school. They don't care about demonstrated interest. Fascinating, isn't it? So with that being said, if you are deciding to apply to MIT, here are some admissions facts that you should know. Their application due date is January 1st. They do offer early action. So early action is not binding and that due date is November 1st. Your SAT or ACT is required to be considered for admission and they have a $75 application fee. In terms of fees when you go to the school, their tuition is $64,310 per year. 
as of now, of course. <laughs> there is $420 of required fees. And for food and housing on campus, you'll pay $21,000. $264, but they do offer financial aid. The total amount of need-based scholarships or grants that were awarded to students equates to $171,376,434. Now, the total amount of non-need-based scholarships or grants equates to $2,721,000, $578. Now let's talk about the stats for their student life. The percent of students who attend MIT and are from out of state, but excluding international students is 91%. 91% of all undergrads who are from the United States are out of state. This is actually really fascinating to me. Students from Massachusetts, where y'all at? The percent of men who join fraternities at MIT is 41%. That's pretty high if you ask me. The percent of women who join sororities is much lower at 25%. The percent of students who live in college owned or affiliated housing is 92%. So most people live on campus. And that leaves the percentage of students who live off campus to 8%. Out of all their undergraduate students, 529 of those are international. Now I'll give the ethnic or racial background for MIT from highest number to lowest number. There are 1,595 Asian students, 964 white students, 639 Latino or Hispanic students, 349 black or African American students, 310 students with two or more races, 138 students whose race or ethnicity is unknown, nine American indigenous or Alaskan native students, and two native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander students. What do you guys think about that? Let me know your main takeaway from all of these statistics in the comments below. Oh, also, since you're applying to MIT, you're gonna have to write all the supplemental essays. So I put together a comprehensive guide that breaks it all down for you and it's totally free. Like everything, you can find it in the description below. I truly think this is gonna help you out guys. Who doesn't want a free guide that's gonna make applying and getting accepted to MIT so much easier? That's all for today's video. There is plenty more where that came from, so check out the other videos on my channel for more college admissions insight. I'll see you soon.